Hey, good morning, everyone. It is day number nine as we continue to go. And today we're going to talk about what real gratitude can look like under the guides of what we talk about in architect language, which is, of course, uh, the first question we ask you. A um, couple announcements, things first. One is that the new um, film, which is the follow up to The Secret some 16 years ago, which is called Beyond the Secret, The Awakening is going to go live tomorrow. We'll have the link up here for you so you can download it directly, watch it, because obviously, you know, you have the time to do it. Two, the new passion test that will be free will be available uh, this weekend over at our website, architecting360.com. If you've not registered for our new interactive learning platform where we can really track your data, track your performance, your testing, everything go through it and learn uh, some of these new skills going into this next environment, you can do that as well. So make sure you check that out. And also, uh, more importantly, today it's about gratitude. Now, everybody out there is talking about being grateful and grateful and grateful, but let's start with this. You know, the first question we really ever ask anybody in architecting language is really this, is if you only had 30 days left to live, would you be doing anything you're doing right now? And so I'm going to modify that question for you and say, let's assume that you only do have 30 days left to live because now perhaps more than ever, it's really become crystal clear that that is a reality. And as you know, some of the, the releasing of the numbers they're saying, you know, that's potentially you know, hundreds of thousands of people who are going to be exiting the planet and taking the great journey back to, you know, great spirit, whatever they believe, whatever you believe coming up. And we all are going to face our, our, some of our deepest fears, what we call the beautiful darkness inside uh, architect language. And those are the fears of, you know, what happens if I'm not good enough? What happens if my job's not there? What happens if my relationship ends? How do I deal with my kids, you know, uh, when I want to <laughs> when I want to not be around them? How do I not be able to travel, go outside? What about freedoms? What if I get sick? So as we go through this process alone together, um, one of the things that I thought would be interesting for us to do, and so I'll start today, is let's assume that we only had 30 days left to live. And I was thinking about this last night. I... I don't know if you remember the movie Deep Impact with uh, Morgan Freeman. And I watched that movie last night and I was just sitting there and kind of winding up the day. And it became really clear to me that what would I do if I knew I had 30 days left to live? And, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I'd travel, I'd do this, I'd do that. And I think those are all merit, meritable and, and have merit. And I've done a lot of traveling. I've been very blessed that I've traveled a, a lot uh, around the world. So I've seen a great many things. Have I seen everything I wanted to see? No. But have I seen, you know, 70, 80%? Yeah, I have. And then I started thinking, well, what would I really do? And I started thinking about time. And so this is what I'm going to do and see if this resonates with you. And I invite you to do it. And then uh, on certain platforms uh, here on our YouTube channel, uh, I won't do it, but on our Facebook and our private group on Facebook, which you can join, you can ask for us to join some of the, re uh, the details there, is you can, um, you'll ta I'll tag the people that have influenced my life. So my thought was, I can't travel, can't go anywhere, neither can you, no matter where you are on the planet, it's pretty tight. Um, you put everybody at risk to do so, including yourself. So let's go the other way. And so for me, I was going to start, instead of saying just a gratitude journal that says, hey, thanks so much, or, you know, I'm glad I can breathe and I'm glad I'm alive. And those are all valuable things. I don't want to misinterpret those things. But what if we really go back and we thanked the people that have had an impact on our lives, people who have helped us change, who have helped us learn and grow, people who have... Um, you know, just been there and we probably haven't really taken the time to tell the story. So for me, I'm going to start off today with a couple of things. First of all, I'll start with uh, my mother. My mother and I have uh, uh, always, you know, had some uh, travels together. We've always been uh, together because, you know, my father at a very young age uh, left us. And so, um, as you know, um, that creates a very tight bond. And so I want to thank my mother for always believing in me. And my, my mother instilled in me something a long time ago. And it was, uh, it was something we used to say when I was a kid that said, hey, you know, it's you and me against the world. And it pretty much was always that way. But it, now we can change that. It's not against the world. It's, uh, you know, you and I um, 
traveling through the world. And I encourage you to do the same. But she instilled in me great self-confidence. She always instilled in me that I could do anything I wanted to do and that I was, you know, I could, you know, be on stage. My mother is the reason I got into entertainment. Uh, my mother is the one that first taught me um, modeling. Uh, my mother is the reason I got my first, you know, fashion fashion show runway for J.C. Penney's back in uh, when I was nine years old, 40 years ago. Ooh. <laughs> 40 years ago and um, you know spent three days with me teaching me how to do runway modeling obviously you know at nine out you know I'm not you know <laughs> a Victoria's Secret model or anything like that but nonetheless taught me how to do it I and I went up against uh, uh, other young uh, boys at the time and I, I won the gig and it got me into entertainment and it set me on a path and so I want to thank her for always being there for me and through some of the rough times and some of the, the good times as well. And she watched my career continue and still does to this day. As a matter of fact, for those of you who come into the architect community, uh, if you're not talking to her or Sarah, uh, I'd be surprised because my mother actually, believe it or not, actually helps people in our CRM, customer relations management software, in the back end and talks to them, either through text or through email or just direct one-on-one. -on -one. So she's still uh, here around to this day, if you can believe that. I also want to thank my three brothers who have been with me throughout my life. Um, my first one is Paul Dunphy, um, who uh, he and I met at the age of five, and both of our, our fathers, former fathers, uh, used to fly F-4s together, and obviously they're both now gone and have left the planet. And we were in Germany together, and we were in California together. We went to uh, opposing high schools, and a funny, we played football one year. He was on defense. I was on offense. Um, you know, he was a superstar tennis player. And I was a golfer, and we were just always best of friends. And you know, um, uh, we were the perfect balance of each other. We are to this day. And he has had a beautiful career as a first responder, police officer, now detective, and has had you know a thirty-year career, and has two uh, amazing children, um, and whatnot. And so I want to thank him for always being there, and thank you for uh, always being my rock, always making sure that uh, I could get back up. And he always looked over me like a big brother, even though he is technically only six months older than me, but he always did. And to this day, we are still very, very, very tight friends. I just spoke to him last week, checking on him and his family. So I want to thank uh, him as well. And then uh, my other brother, Jeff Brennan. Uh, Jeff Brennan and I have been friends for 30 plus years, and we were two kids. And our story starts more in California, Oceanside. Um, Jeff was a Marine cadre. Uh, and thank you for your service, uh, Jeff, because you've just always been a badass in that way. And ironically, Jeff and I met and he and I were dating these two girls uh, <laughs> that were roommates. And that's how we met. Eventually, you know, very quickly, we both broke up with both the girls, but he and I remained friends and to this day still are. Uh, we talk pretty much every other day and he has been an amazing soul, um, done a very successful business, um, served his country well, still serves the people, does Toys for Tots, and really is involved in the frontline responders up in the um, Seattle, Washington area. Uh, just an amazing soul, and I want to thank him for always being there and making sure that when I was down or I, you know, I got my teeth kicked in or was heartbroken or whatever I was going through, Jeff always gave me a safe place to hide. I didn't have to be anybody. I could just be Travis. I didn't have to be Dr. Fox. I didn't have to be you know, the celebrity or the guy or any of that crap. I could just be Travis, and that's a really powerful friend to have. And then I want to thank my last uh, brother, Andrew Fisher. Uh, Fisher and I met on the PGA Tour. Uh, and at the time, he was caddying for a superstar uh, PGA Tour player, and I was that uh, individual's um, psychological coach and mental coach. And uh, we became very fast friends. It was very clear that we had had many lives together. We, we, you know, we spoke the same language. We understood the, the mission of the heart. We understood that life was really an adventure. And it became this lifelong friendship that is, and I'm sure all of you have this one friend, and I hope that you do, that no matter when you, you, you talk, it's like you picked up where you left off. Even if it's six months or a year down the road, you pick up where you left off and it's like you never, uh, you never left. Fish has always been there uh, for me and uh, hopefully I've, I've done that favor as well for him. But we can pick up a conversation from a year ago right where we left off. And uh, Fish has always been a big, um, big supporter of Architect and the Architect journey and in my own personal journey and we share very very deep conversations that take you know sometimes an hour or two just to get to some sense of wow well okay that's what that conversation was about so i want to thank those three brothers and my mother for being in my life because you know if i i had only 30 days left to live then i would want to thank them and i would want a record of that thanking um, and so i'm going to invite all of you out there today to do that if you are 
uh, an architect graduate, then obviously I would invite you to do the same. If you're in AIT's architects in training, you know, why not? Step out, at least do one. And if you're a first time jumper, then you get to look at what your value system is and what's really important. And so today, while it won't be as long as a video, it will be more about really what's real gratitude. Do we Are we thanking the people that are in our lives or are we too busy consumed with other things? And more often than not, I think, and understandably so, to a certain degree, um, we're thinking about other things like you know, survival or toilet paper or how am I going to you know, feed my kids? And those are valuable, don't get me wrong. But let's be honest, if we're going to talk about law of attraction and we're going to talk about these, you know, uh, states of mind and states of being, don't we really have to be it first or be in it at least? And so for me, I was thinking about gratitude, like I said, you know, I don't know, two in the morning, whatever the hell it was. Instead of just saying it in a book and waiting until you're dead, why not say it now when it has the most impact? Why not share it where it has the most impact now? Why not turn this time of vulnerability into, into a strength? You know, we've all been programmed that, you know, don't show your weakness and, you know, don't, don't let them see you cry. And all this. I'm like, that's BS, man. We are all in unprecedented and uncharted territory at a global scale. Isn't vulnerability now a strength? I think so. I think the architects do too. What do you think? Make a comment below. Let us know. I don't mean vulnerability as in letting people walk all over you. I don't mean vulnerability as in... Um, you know, false kindness. I don't mean vulnerability is in showing kumbaya. I mean vulnerability in showing that, you know what? It's okay to feel. We're so programmed not to feel. We're so programmed not to really genuinely think. And yet this whole ideology, this whole theme, this whole thought process that you're self-made is just total BS, right? Nobody's self-made. I mean, the architects, we're in the people business. So shouldn't it be about people? Shouldn't it be about thanking them and about really qualifying the lessons that they've we've learned and the stories that we tell? Because now more than ever, we can document our journey. We can document our entire life. We have literally generations that are, from the moment they're born, have a device in their hand or a camera in front of them. And you can document this journey. There's this powerful information if it's you know expressed from a vulnerability perspective. And I think part of the other vulnerability that I'm going to challenge myself to, although I'm, you know it's not going to be a day-to-day -day thing, but it's going to be pretty close, is I'm, I'm going to let you see the real me, right? Here's the gray hairs. You know, they're all coming in. Here's the gray in my beard. Here's not the, the doctored up, you know, um, snap seed picture of myself looking cool at some place. This is me, you know, because look, you know, I, I spent a lifetime in front of the camera and I've spent a lifetime on stage and I spent a lifetime being full of crap. You know, and I don't mean full of crap that the information that I teach isn't real, just meaning not letting myself be vulnerable, not letting myself experience what I was feeling, at least publicly or sharing it, you know, and keeping yourself together and always saying that I have all the answers is just total BS because nobody has the answers. I know I don't. And I know every architect that's gone through our, our system and any architect in the community right now will tell you the same thing. We don't have any answers. Now we have really good questions that will help you come to your answers. And isn't that what we're all really seeking anyways? But see, that goes back, in my opinion, to hearkening to the people that have had impact on us and sharing that because that's a feeling you can pull from from a memory immediately, which activates your feeling sequence, which then activates how you actually feel. Now, when those feelings come up, what do you do with them? Are you stuffing them back down? You're trying to keep it all together. You're presenting a cool image. You want to make sure that you know everybody's safe and secure. And I get all of that as well. But then who takes care of you? Because if you're not taking care of you, who is? And at what point is there a breaking point within you? At what point does your, psycho your psychology, your emotions, your, your physiology break down? When does your immunity break down? When do your defenses come down? Where is that place? If it's not here within you, then where else can it ever be? So this whole journey about thanking people, I'll be doing this. Uh, each time I come on and do a broadcast, obviously one, so you can hear some of the stories that are of my life and that help help shape what I am and what the architect community is about, at least, least in part, partial, parcel, excuse me, but also two, uh, to celebrate those people. Because here's the truth, people, and I, I don't mean to be Debbie Downer, but some of these people that you have had an effect on your life or you know, have helped you through certain things may not be here. People are leaving the planet every day. 
right? And it's gonna get a little more intense over the next 30 days. So isn't it time now that we can at least have a record? Tag them, let them know thank you. Let them know how you affected their lives. Like for me, my mother and Jeff and Paul and, and Andrew um, um, helped help shape me. They have been four pillars that have helped shape the castle of what Architect has been built on. And there are many more. There's more coming. So for those of you who are wondering if you're going to be on my list, they'll do my best. Didn't name them all because there's been thousands of you. There is not just two or three. And I think that's one of the greatest awarenesses I came to on myself, and maybe you will as well. Comment below. Let me know. Is that it isn't just two or three people that's affected your life. It's hundreds and thousands of people that you've already encountered. And how quickly do we forget them? And we just write them off like they don't exist. But yet, if you really are going to follow this, the, the law of attraction, you're going to follow that, you know, I'm the creator or the architect of my journey, you're going to come to the conclusion and awareness somewhere that every single person you have met, crossed paths with, had a conversation with, a cup of coffee, dated, slept with, broke up with, had your heart broken, broken someone else's heart, everything, business partners, good, bad, left, right, social media is a reflection of you. And in some form or another, the deepest of all gratitude that we can ultimately come to, at least in my opinion in the architect language, is coming to the awareness of the gratitude that every single one of those people and those experiences is and has and is, is, shall be, is contributing to you. To what you were before this, this COVID-19 thing came onto the planet and became it's what it is and continues to grow to what you will be right now, or excuse me, what you are right now, what you will be going forward. But isn't it time that as you go through those memories, it'll evoke those feelings. And so now you can get in the habit of noticing the difference between when your head's running the show and when your feelings are running the show. It's a great way to practice it. It's a great way to jump in and start diving into this, the heart sequence of it, because now more than ever, it's gonna be, it's gonna be powerful. We're gonna, we're gonna need to shift this paradigm pretty hardcore. And it's gonna start with a day-to-day -day practice, maybe an hour-to-hour -hour practice, and maybe minute by minute in some cases. And as they say over in Tanzania, um, and you go to climb Kilimanjaro uh, in Swahili, it's poli poli, right? Slowly, slowly, one step, one breath to bring us back to present and to bring us back to that gratitude state of saying, you know, crap, that person really changed my life. That person was there for me. I never thanked them enough. That person made me laugh. They made me cry. They, they, you know, in many cases, I can speak for my, my, all four of the people that I've mentioned on this, uh, uh, gratitude uh, video, as well as many others that'll come. These particular four have always been there, you know, when, when my heart was broken or when I had to go through very tough times or a business breakup or a move or just needed someone, to, you know, a shoulder to cry on. And yeah, I've cried with all of them, every one of them. And I'm proud of it. And I'm proud that they have cried with me as well. And I've laughed and, and joked and, and had had great humbling experiences with them and great enlightening moments, both as a teacher and student, brothers, friends, and fellow journeymen um, and journey women. And so... Isn't that what the people business is all about? And I don't mean people business as in business. I mean, people are your business. I mean, now more than ever, we're learning that, you know, people's what really made our businesses work, right? Because all these buildings don't really give a crap. They're all doing fine. COVID-19 doesn't affect them. Um, the mountains are doing the fine. They're doing the same thing. Animals are like, whatever, you humans have to deal with yourselves. You guys have screwed us for a while, so you get to feel what it feels like, you know, to be... Uh, dealing with the species cleansing. So instead of just writing in your gratitude journal, which is all about you, which I get, and I think that's powerful, isn't it now a way to approach, from a certain point of view, thanking those that have actually helped you become you and will help you become you continue to go forward? Now when you sit and think about your gratitude and you think about that space, you can actually invoke your first steps into the jump, you invoke your first steps into f living your life heart forward versus head forward, and you can truly be, you know, heart over feet or heart over heels. So your heart's leading you in the direction that you want to go because you're, you're pulling up these memories of them. You can also do the clearing. You know, you can clear out some of the times it was sad, you know, and you can, you know, forgive and let go and, and, do all of those things so that you can come to a space of centered because now more than ever, if they came to you and said, hey, by the way, you've got COVID-19, it looks like you've got the symptoms, 
you've got a 50-50 shot, I bet you'd want to thank them. I bet you want to hold their hand and, and see if they'd still be there for you because now more than ever you're going to find out you know, that being there for people is going to be a challenge because every person now is you know, potentially or will potentially and can potentially be infected. That is a generalized problem. And so we want to make sure that that problem doesn't um, affect them while you're trying to thank them or say goodbye, right? This isn't more of a downer one, but this is a really a really powerful one for me because uh, I again I sat and thought about this last night and really kind of put it together and I'll be working on uh, a new program that I'll be releasing hopefully later this month. Um, subject to the ability to get all of this filmed, <laughs> is uh, called the Keys to Fear, and it is the 21 major fears that we go through in three different blocks, and the fear of communication, the fear of trust, and the fear of unconditional love and going through those fears. And I've written the whole program out over the last 30 days and, and dove into it pretty hard and to my own fears. And I asked all the architects and got a lot of information of what we found was the most uh, powerful fears. And so I was then thinking, well, what, what is the other side of fear? The other side of fear is, is peace, calm, gratitude, thanking. So what if we started by thanking them? So that's what today's about. And so without going on too much longer, you go ahead and uh, think about that. And I want to thank my mom. I want to thank Paul and Jeff and Andrew for being in my life. I love you all. I'm grateful for you. Thanks for uh, helping me become who I am and still helping me shape that. And uh, always doing that. You guys are the rocks from which I can uh, sharpen my sword on all the time. You are the cornerstones. Uh, and I am grateful for all of you. Tomorrow I'll be inviting you to some other people on my journey. Maybe you could do the same thing on your thing. Maybe we can get this thing started. If you do, if you appreciate that, we would uh, appreciate you ha uh, hashtagging architecting dreams. That's architecting, I-N-G, dreams. And then uh, hashtag architecting 360 because this is a 360 approach, right? We'll be getting the uh, a link to you as soon as we get it provided for the film Beyond the Secret the Awakening. You can download it, watch it in your home. Uh, I think they set the price at $9.97, uh, which is pretty cool. A lot of powerful information. Honored to be a part of that film and be in that film with uh, my fellow castmates and as well as the producers. And uh, as always, you can go to the jump. Yeah, get some free resources. Start the first three days of the jump. Experience what it's like, the architect. Move, move into this space that we're talking about now. Find out what it's like. You can do it for free. And there's, there's broadcasts in there as well that we don't do publicly that are only inside that community. Um, the architects are there. I'm there. You get the first three days of the jump. You get a bunch of uh, audio programs, uh, meditations, uh, singing bowls are being added now. Some of the other architects' brands are coming on board. Graduates are coming on board. And you have about uh, 200 and some odd people going through the jump right now. Um, if you're inside there, I do promotions all the time that are community only, that, uh, that are discounts to you. Um, again, everything's free. There's no upsell. There's no BS. If you want to go further into the programs and become an architect or AIT, uh, we're only taking 1,000 AITs uh, this year, and that number has already breached below, uh, obviously, 1,000. Now, uh, once that number is done, we won't take any more architects and training, but the jump and all the other assets will be open to you. So if you want to become an AIT, you'll be able to reach out to a, our CRM through the, the text and the email and be able to find out how to do it. But if, come get the free resources. Why not? Start practicing gratitude from a space of vulnerability as a strength. So at any rate, I just want to give that shout out to you. Hopefully you're safe wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and ultimately, most importantly, um, being in the gratitude. I'll talk to you soon. Architect out. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.